Hello everybody, it's Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. Today I'm in Hudson, Florida, and I'm at a jewelry shop. And there's something special about this jewelry shop, I gotta show you the inside, because I was surprised about what they actually have in here that we all know and love. So what surprised me about this shop, I'm gonna show you right here, is first, when you go into the right-hand side, there's coins immediately, and this is a jewelry shop. So I found this quite fascinating. And now I'm here with the owner, Johnny. Hello. Johnny, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Can you tell me a little bit about your shop? Well, um, we've, we're coming up to close to 40 years in business, um, started by my mom and uh, my dad started getting involved after a few years. Um, they started around 81, 82. I came, I came around here since I'm age three. When I turned 12, I started actually working here a little bit part-time. And um, at age 17, started working here full-time. Took a year off, thought I knew better than my parents and uh, went and got a job somewhere else and eventually came back. And I've been here ever since, since age 19. I'm now 38, so that's almost 20 years that I've been full-time working here. Um, when I turned uh, 29, actually uh, in 2010, my, uh, my dad retired. So I ended up um, taking ownership of the business in April of 2010. So we're, I'm actually celebrating my 10 year anniversary running the business. Wow. Um, so yeah, things have been really good. We did a remodel a year ago. Um, it had a very old look to it, you know, that was uh, popular in the 90s. And uh, we stripped the whole place, repainted it, new showcases, um, new ideas, new looks. Um, it used to be more of like a collectible shop and jewelry shop. And what we've done is we've, um, and coin, and what we've done is we've simplified things. We've got rid of all the collectibles and now it's all about the coins and it's all about the jewelry. So you have all kinds of coins and, and dollars and what a neat showcase to have as soon as you go in to a shop. Like this, a jewelry shop. Well, I, I enjoy this type of stuff. This is, this is one of my hobbies is coins, especially, uh, you know, rare coins. And uh, I, I actually like ancient coins. Um, this is something I'm very interested in. Um, have had huge collections of ancients before um, that have you know sold over the years, but uh, always was really fascinated with them. Got an intro into them by a couple of guys that came in about, I guess, eight, seven, eight years ago, and they sold me a, a big collection I bought for, for 3,000. And I was really wet behind the ears back then about it. So I basically broke even on the deal, but it really gave me an education on ancient coins and um, I still have a couple th things left that were just meaningful to me from the collection. Like I have, um, I have, um, let's see, which one is this? This is Pontius Pilate. Pontius it, Pilate. Can Pontius Pilate. This was a coin by Pontius Pilate, which is the, the guy who ultimately made the decision to crucify Jesus. This is, this was his currency from Judea. Um, this was identified not by me, but by somebody else, um, by the, actually the guy who, uh, sold me the collection. He was an expert on this stuff. I also have, um, King Herod, which is King Herod. I don't know if your viewers would be aware of this, but he's the one that actually, when Jesus was born, had every firstborn, uh, baby, uh, male, murdered of all the Jews in Judea because he was trying to kill Jesus before he became a thing because he was afraid of the prophecies. Terrible, huh? Yeah, crazy. But to, to see some history like this, like the stories that we read in, in the New Testament, I mean, that could be the coin that somebody held, you know? And to me, that's 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 the thing about coins, you, don't, you know, when you're dealing with the Civil War stuff, like I have some Civil War notes and stuff like that, and I've had big collections of that before. Um, you know, you don't know who held them. You don't know who 
traded them. And it's uh, really cool to think that maybe, I don't know, maybe some, you know, Civil War general had that note in his pocket at one time. And so, like, that's, that's the thing that does it for me with coins and why I add coins to a jewelry store. That's really neat. Mm -hmm. You know, it's unusual for a guy like you or a guy like me, I'm 36, you know, to be into this stuff. Uh, but here we are and we're enjoying it. Um, mm -hmm. It's a neat hobby for sure. And it's as crazy as you want to get price-wise, right? Some of, the, some of the ancients, surprisingly, are not that expensive, am I right? Oh, well, like the stuff I just showed you is, is less than $50, you know, not maybe 100, 100, 125 tops. But some of the ancients that I've had were 5,000. I've had um, Electrum, which is a naturally occurring form of gold and silver. It's like 50% silver, 50% gold, and that's what they used to strike their gold coins with, Electrum. Mm -hmm. And I've had, you know, um, Electrum coins that were from the Isle of Lesbos, Greece, from, you know, 500 BC or 400 BC, something around that time. I can't remember exactly the, the date, so I don't want to be incorrect for your viewers, but um, I've had coins like that that were in five out of five strike, five out of five um, surface condition, and like almost perfect that were worth anywhere from $2,500 to $5,000, just as an example of one. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Can we see some of your trays of coins and like what you have for sale? Well, a lot of stuff is sold since the uh, the whole, you know, people went crazy wanting to buy silver, as I'm sure you're, you guys are aware. Yes. But we have all kinds of various stuff here. And we have, you know, some peace dollars. Um, this is just, uh, you know, it's a, it's a Morgan. Um, we have, you know, some uh, generic silver. I have tubes of them too. Um, American Eagles, the standard stuff that you see a lot. What did you see happen when this pandemic kind of started with your physical silver and Well, and people, gold? people wanted, people hit me up wanting to buy entire tubes. Like one guy, uh, even um, after everything happened, like he's buying tubes after tubes after tubes, you know, just tons of tons of people wanting it and, and finding, uh, not being able to find it at a lot of shops. Luckily I have some good connections and, and um, I, can, I can get silver pretty much anytime, though the price has come up tremendously. Um, my costs are uh, $7 over silver price right now for um, for eagles. So, you know, and that's your of, cost, my cost, right? A lot of people don't even want to take the chance with it. But I think the reason why the costs are up is because people are expecting silver to climb a lot, especially with the weakening of the dollar and all the things that are going on right now. Yeah. Tubes of Morgans. I've got the Confederate notes. I've got proofs. Tubes of eagles. So you have, you got everything a normal, like a coin shop would have, really. Yep. And sometimes you get what, like junk silver in, that kind yeah, of stuff as yeah, well? Yeah, you know, people like to sell over the counter. Um, I'm not the kind of guy that likes to liquidate. I like to offer it to my customers before it gets liquidated. So I definitely give it um, some time in the showcase before, you know, I, uh, before I just blow it out. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, one cool thing. Um, tubes of uh, Canadians. Beautiful, huh? Yeah, they're nice looking coins. And uh, Canadians, they uh, they do the 4.9 silver. A little bit better than ours. A little bit better than ours. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about that right now. <laughs> what about this, uh, this gold nugget? Tell me about this thing. <laughs> this is just something I picked up that I thought was a neat little trinket. It's, um, it's uh, California Gold Rush Gold. And it's just a half a gram of pure gold. And they found it on Looks like the SS Central America. Pretty neat. So I always kept it in the case as just a cool little trinket. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Hmm. How are you on gold right now? I don't see a lot in here. I see that maybe one piece. It's like a piece of a jewelry here. Uh, uh, it's, people bought it all. It's gone. It's gone. I mean, um, just a, a month ago, I had, you know, I had a dozen one-tenth eagles. I had um, some some bigger stuff. And it's just it just flew off. It just flew off. Interesting. So as a jewelry shop, um, people come in with what, like maybe some necklaces and they want to sell yep. um, and what they have, like maybe a gold coin or something like that. And they just say, Hey, do you mm -hmm. buy everything? Mm -hmm. And you do. Yep. Now, how do you verify that this stuff is legit uh, between jewelry and coins? 
Well, of course, we, uh, we do a lot of testing, so that's something that I would be glad to, to show you guys um, as far as gold, as far as diamonds, um, how we go about testing. A lot of it's eyeball. Um, I have been wrong in the past, but 99% of the time, like my eyes do, do the heavy lifting as far as testing goes um, because I've just been doing it so long. And, you know, people ask me, they, they'll bring me something in and they'll say, is this real? I'm like, no. And like, wait a second, you didn't even test it. I'm like, look, when you've been doing this as long as I have, when you see a diamond, it looks like you've seen the face of a familiar friend. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see somebody in the crowd that you know, you just know them. That's when I see a diamond, I know it. Now that my eyes have not are not as good as they used to be because I'm climbing up to 40, um, you know, the, uh, the sometimes like the smaller stones aren't as obvious anymore. And I definitely have to use my testing equipment for that, which I'd be glad to show you guys. Yeah, please. We don't use this as the end all be all. And anybody who is interested in getting something like this for yourself, you do have to have knowledge before you, you operate this. What this is for is this is for somebody who brings in a huge batch of gold. You already have eyeballed it and you already know basically what's real and what's not. And you use this to help process it faster. But you definitely don't want to buy something like this if you're a beginner or you're just getting into testing gold because you, you will get burned. People have gotten burned with this machine um, because of that exact reason. They don't, they don't have the prior knowledge and they got themselves burned because this will sometimes give you false positives. Interesting. Um, but it's that being said, it's a very good machine for people that do have some knowledge. So what I always do is, um, you know, I'll eyeball a piece and I'll try to find a stamp first. This one is stamped. This one is stamped, uh, if my eyes are not deceiving me, 10K. So we put the, the ring on the metal plate and then we touch the probe to it. And uh, you can see it's 10K. It's, so it's legit. Yeah. Whew. And then what we'll do is we'll double check it on the acid stone. Okay. So that way we, we make, I mean, we buy thousands and thousands of grams of gold and we might get a gram here and there that is, is gold filled that we missed. And it's mostly because we're in a rush testing, you know. Gotcha. Okay, that says 14K. You see how it stopped in the middle of the green? Yes. Mm hmm All right. So now we'll acid test them. And here's how you acid test. So what you want to do is you want to get yourself a touchstone. Now this I do recommend to your, to your viewers. This is age-old, tried, tested, and true. You don't have to have a ton of knowledge. You can have a basic YouTube knowledge and be able to buy and sell gold with this. If you're, if you're, you've got to, you always got to read the stamps, okay? Um, if something looks fishy to you, it probably is. This we thought was 10K. So what we're going to do first, we're going to drop some 14 karat acid on it and see what happens. And what you see here is you see the color of the, the scratch that's not touched by acid is different than the color, it's brighter and whiter, or lighter I should say, than the, the color of the scratch. It's burning away some of that alloy, which makes it look darker because this acid, the 14 karat acid is too strong. So okay. when we drop the 10 karat acid on it, there should be no change. It should just look wet. And it does. And it does. Thank goodness, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, so now we'll test the, the rope chain that we were doing. These are harder to, to, to scratch on the stone because they're loose. So this is one of the best tests you can really do. Is this, is, really this is the most tried, tested, and true. It's been going on for, I guess, thousands of years. I would imagine a long, long time people have been testing gold like this. Okay. Um, so we don't need to use the 10 K acid because we tested it and knew it was 14. So what we're just going to do is verify that the machine didn't lie to us. 
and it's staying. It's not fading like that one did. Interesting. Yeah. That's the way to go then. It's the way to go, especially for, for you know, new guys. Now guys that buy a lot of gold and are seasoned will do really well with the key tester, so. Now do you have any fake pieces you can show us what might be different by um, chance? I think, don't we have some in one of my desks? So here we have a piece presumed to be fake. Okay. All right. So first thing we want to do is test it on here. And it is testing and, uh, oh, it's falling. It's coming back down. It's coming back down. Why would it do that? Well, because um, it needed more contact time with the probe is my guess um, to get through the gold plating surface because it's testing the gold plating at first. I see. And then once it gets through that, then it, it drops because it, it's uh, not getting the right reading from it. And so the customer says, well, you know, that machine, that, this is my grandma's ring. She was a rich lady. She wouldn't have anything fake. Um, that machine's probably broken. Okay, so we'll take it over here and we'll test it with that. So the first thing when I scratch it, do you notice like those left a nice, nice heavy scratch? Oh yeah. Gold, gold leaves a nice, if you want to feel it, you can feel it yourself, try scratching it. Try scratching it? Yes, yeah, just try scratching it and you'll see like the type of feel has, you can go more pressure. More pressure, you yeah. don't want to break it. You're not going to break it. Okay, yeah. you feel that? Now, yeah. now try scratching that. Switch me. Try it over here. Oh yeah, totally different feel. Totally different feel. Yep. It's like harder metal. Yeah. Gold is soft. So what you're feeling is the softness of gold. It's like digging in. When you test, exactly. Okay. So when we test this, it doesn't it doesn't really leave a mark. So that's a first indicator. And they're still like, oh, you know, still drop the acid. Okay, fine. <laughs> drop the acid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're from the 70s. Right. <laughs> and of course the acid just eats it away. Cause it's no good. No good. You no good. You no good. <laughs> Interesting, huh? Mm-hmm. Now, does it damage the ring, the necklace to scratch it like that? You will have some people that have like a really nice piece that are iffy about that, but that's a different type of clientele. And, you know, typically people like that have papers, they have um, and typically something like that isn't going to be just a plain piece of gold. We're mainly buying it for the diamond that's in it or the gemstone that's in it. So it's a whole different ballpark. So typically, no, people don't say anything about scratching gold because they want to get rid of it and they want the cash. So I don't know much about jewelry. I'm not much of a jewelry wearer personally. I mean, I got the wedding ring. Um, I had some necklaces before. Well, here you before. go. Some men's uh, fancy wedding rings, you know, what they want to, some men want to have a couple diamonds in there, have a little bit of bling. Mm -hmm. And that's what we got there. It's all white gold. A little bit of yellow gold accent on some of them. So I could wear that. I wouldn't be. It wouldn't be too weird if I was to wear one of those. You think? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Okay. See that slab? That's uncut opal. Uncut opal. Yeah. That's from Andamooka, Australia. It's the desert region of Australia. That's one thing I'm big into is opals. So over there in Andamooka, huh? Andamooka. I've never been there. You've heard of it? No, I've never actually heard of that before. Yeah, there's Andamooka, there's Coober Pedy, but it's the, de the, de the desert region of Australia and there's a lot of opal there. Now help and me out, is, is this a big deal, opal? I don't know much about opal either. Opal's a big deal. It is a big deal. Yeah. And that's a huge piece. Yeah, exactly. Huh. You know, show me how to test a diamond. Yes. So uh, this is this particular tester, because here's a big problem that's showing up in our industry. And unfortunately, I don't have one here to uh, to test for you, but lab grown diamonds. OK, right. This is a big thing now. And a lot of the big box retailers are selling them. OK, so we had to buy this machine. This machine was a thousand bucks. OK. But this could protect us if somebody brought in a pair of one carat studs or two carat studs uh, from a, a big loss. The difference uh, in value between the uh, uh, nat naturally occurring and lab grown diamonds is significant. So to have a machine like this could save us, you know, 20 times over. Um, and a lot of guys we get, um, I'm in a lot of forums with pawn shops and with jewelers. And um, a, lot of, a lot of stuff that's going on is, 
people are posing as actual customers. Oh, hey, I want to sell you these diamond studs and people are getting burned, not realizing they're buying lab grown diamonds. These, you know, you, you could pay five, $10,000 for a pair of studs and it might only be worth 2,500 because it's lab grown. Hmm. So that's what this is for. So what I will test though, one of these is what's called a moissanite and one of these is a diamond. So this, this tester will tell us what is what. It's ready to go. Okay, so we'll test this guy first. We're gonna hit start and... And this is the diamond? Well, we'll find out. Well, we're finding out, okay. I don't wanna give it up. Diamond, yay. Thank See goodness. The, do, 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 like yeah. that, that uh, happy noise. I need a happy noise. So now we're testing this other one. Moistenite. Moistenite. So it tells you exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And it'll tell you for lab grown as well. Hmm. So that's going to save you a lot of money in the long run for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Right? So people bring me the stuff that they buy at the big box retailers to get rid of when they don't want it anymore. And so that stuff's going to start showing up at my door, and I'm going to be ready for it. <clears throat> Interesting. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever had diamond tests uh, on the channel before, so this is good. Mm -hmm. Well, we're even going to take it a, a step further. We're going to do gemstone tests. Okay, cool. Now, I have had gemstones on the channel before, and I was kind of curious what, how you find out if they're just plastic or they're a gemstone. Well, we're going to show you. So what we have here is a pink tourmaline. Pink tourmaline. Oh, I'm totally familiar with those. Are you? No. <laughs> not at all. Oh, you had me going there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this tool is what's called a refractometer. Okay. And um, gemstones, all stones, have a refractive index. Okay, that's what that RI number is. And when you look through the scope, you'll see, um, hopefully you'll be able to get it on camera so that they, they can get an idea of what it looks like, but you'll be able to see what the refractive index of the stone is and it'll be able to, um, it'll be able to tell you. So this is a tourmaline, so it should be a refractive index of 1.624 to 1.644. Now, I'm a little familiar with uh, refracting, which has to do with light, right? How the yes. light bends around an object? Yes. That's what's going on here? Yes. Okay. This is, this is a, a scope for that. Okay, interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to use um, refract, uh, refractometer liquid, refractive index liquid. And it just takes a little tiny droplet. Maybe I might use another drop. Two drops will do it? Two drops will do you. Okay. All right. This stuff is really corrosive, so if you ever get this, be very careful because it is nasty stuff. Don't drink it. Don't drink it. All right. I'll try not to. If you do, call poison control. Yeah. Or call mom. Mom always seemed to know what to do. <laughs> All right. And then what we're going to do is just drop the stone on the liquid. And now what we need is we need a light source. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use my phone. Aren't the phones great? Man, what would I do without it? Jeez. I don't... Where's your light source? And what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to just look at it real quick. Sure. Yeah, but you should be able to see it with your camera. Um, yeah, and it's falling right in the right where it needs to be. So what you're looking for is you're looking for a green bar. And it, it's not extremely obvious. You might want to back away. You backing have, away? Yeah. Maybe it would help. Oh yeah, you can see it in there. But I don't know if it's gonna work on the camera or not. I've never tried that. I'm looking for a green bar. So it's, it's, 1. it's right 1. under 1.6-ish, yeah, right? Yeah, 1.624 to 1.644. Yeah, I do see it. I see a blue bar on top and then a green bar just below yep, it, yeah? the green bar, that's how you know that that's a tourmaline. That's really neat. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Well, thanks for showing me that. Yeah, no problem. I thought that that would be a... Well, I wouldn't be able to do it by my eye then, really, to test a gemstone. You got to really have something. I mean, I can most of the time. Um, when it comes to certain gemstones, nobody can. Like aquamarines, um, you have to have uh, filters to look at them as a, as a quick test or one of these. Um, 
but uh, most gemstones, you come in with them. I usually know what they are right off the top of my head, unless it's some really wild one that you bought on jewelry television or something like that that I never heard of. There are some that I haven't heard of, but being doing this for 20 years and always having, having a really strong interest in gemstones, you bring one in, I definitely know what it is. Awesome, mm -hmm. interesting. All that experience is helpful. Oh yeah. It's amazing seeing such a, a young guy with all this experience in his craft because uh, like I tell everybody, you know, I spent too much of my life playing video games and uh, a, lot of, a lot of my potential was definitely uh, flushed down hey the TV. Hey man, being on the computer actually uh, graded this channel for you, so yeah, I guess. not so bad. I guess it was helpful a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can I see these, uh, these shark's teeth over here? Sure. You know, here we are in Florida and um, you know, we can go down to Venice Beach and find shark's teeth. It's kind of neat to see these are the actually These are actually um, megalodon teeth. Oh man. They're like, you know, the fossilized ones. I went down to Venice Beach and- There's uh, some shark's teeth, like uh, there, there should be actual some like modern shark's teeth, like probably, probably that. No, actually that's, that's old too. I went down to Venice Beach and this, there was a guy there and he's kind of keeping to himself and he's messing around with something in a bag. And uh, I said, yeah, uh, what, what you got over there? And it, it looked like a shark's tooth, but I wasn't sure. And he goes, oh, these are shark's teeth. And they were big, much bigger than this one, actually. They were huge. Five inch. They were massive. Yeah, it's Megalodon. And I thought, you know what? I got a few hundred bucks in my wallet. Maybe I'll just buy one of these. The kids will think I'm a hero. And I said, hey, how much for it? And he goes, $800 for yep. it. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, that's pretty yeah, good this price. Yeah, this one, this one I'd sell for 250 And that's cheap. Yep. For That's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. I've never actually touched Imagine one. Can I touch getting, one? Yeah, of course. Imagine getting bit by that. Look how crazy by, it is. By uh, about 80 of those. Oh, man. <laughs> You're done. You're done. If that goes right into you. Oh, yeah. That's going right through my hand. My it's goodness. It's still serrated, too. You can feel it. Yeah, this. it's sharp. Sharp mm -hmm. as can be. That's fascinating. I should buy that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And these are what, like little little pieces and... Yep. What, what I did was somebody was selling them and um, I was like, you know what? They wanted 75 bucks for the whole bunch of them. And I was like, you know what? I'll help them out, and I'll, and when kids come in, I usually give give one to kids. And I mean, the bowl was this full before, and uh, so that's how much I've given out. That's neat. Mm -hmm. They would look cool in a bezel. And when though. adults want them, they're two bucks each. <laughs> <laughs> those are awesome. Thanks for showing me those. Yeah, no problem. These are fossils. Ooh, like a, that was like a snail kind of thing. Like an ammonite or whatever those called. How, what are those called? I'm not sure what this one is called, but yeah, it's similar to like the ammonite. Interesting. Um, this is this is a gemmy azurite. Wow, that's fancy, huh? That's look how pretty that is. And that's that's comes like that. It's not like colored or anything. Not colored at all. Wow. So can you guess what this is? That is a piece of plastic. I don't know. I know. Smell it. I have to smell it. It's got a faint smell. Is it the sulfur? Yes. Okay. This is brimstone. Oh, wow. Yeah, so the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, supposedly this is what rained down on them. Uh, I uh, thought brimstone uh, would have been like a, I don't know, like a reddish color for some well, reason in my mind. Well, when you heat this, it turns red like blood. Oh. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Interesting. Yeah, I've seen, you can find videos on YouTube where they heat brimstone and it literally turns blood red. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. You have a lot of collections, a lot of hobbies. Tell me about this one. Okay, so this is my uh, this is my saltwater tank. I've had this for, I've had this since I think 2012 now. Um, you know, things have come and gone. That's not the same clown that was in there from the beginning. But my clown, my last clown, did la last a four or five years, I believe. Um, but what we have here is different types of corals. This is um, called um, this is called a hammer. The, um, they call a hammer because they kind of got like a hammer shape, the, the tips of them. Yes, it does. Um, and then I have a frog spawn in here. Where is the frog spawn? It got frog moved. spawn's back here. I know a little bit about coral too, so. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. We don't want the purple tips. You have all of, all of that. So that's, that's so frog cool. spawn. These are called hairy mushrooms. Green hairy mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And they got huge. When I first put them in there three years ago, they were like that. And that's how big, like, and there was a couple and they spread all over the tank and really took over. But I like them. I think they're really neat. Yeah, they are neat. You got some beautiful pink coralline algae growing in there. Yeah. Very fascinating. Mm -hmm. Bangai cardinal fish. Yeah. It's a great looking tank. Thanks. You got some kind of leather down here, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Very neat. Let's go to see some hobbies. Yeah. This was a this was a neat thing. I bought this pocket watch from somebody. And it came with this. It says um, A.E. Causey. A.E. Causey. 
And A.E. Causey was, um, he was in the Civil War. He was a Union soldier. Looks like, I'm pretty sure that's Union, the Union uniform. And this is maybe his pendant? Yeah, this was his watch. Oh, it was an Omega watch, watch yep. Yeah. And um, yeah, this was his, uh, this was like the pendant that he had made, I guess, to show that he was uh, in the Civil War. That's fancy, huh? There's a picture of him from 1863. Jeez. Uh, Colonel Abraham Ezekiel Causey Sr. September 27th, 1863. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. This is stuff that just came into the shop? Or? Yeah, yeah, this stuff walks in, man. <laughs> this is your personal collection, really? Yep. Wow. Some rose quartz. Um, oh, my mother used to collect these things right here. Oh, yeah, my mom gave me those. So I just keep them there just because uh, she gave them to me. This is a neat piece. I forget what this is called, but I think the... This, this crystal structure is so neat. It almost looks like a city, like a futuristic city. It does. It looks so neat. I like how it has the different colors, the brown, the green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's fancy. And then we have, uh, now this is ammonite. Okay. You see this this side, it has some opalescence. Yeah, wow. Support your local coin shops. I know, I know the premiums are high right now, but if you pay $22 for an eagle right now and it hits $100, you're not going to care about the, the dollar that the coin place made on it, right. you know, and the $7. So, you know, there's a really huge potential for growth, my opinion. So I collect a lot of silver for that reason. I keep a lot of silver on hand for that reason because I really do believe on it, in it. It's not, you know, it's not just because obviously it's not the majority of my business. It's because I love the, the, the field. And I believe in the field. I, I honestly believe in stacking silver and gold. That's good, man. Mm -hmm. It's good for us younger guys like that to believe in that stuff, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, listen, Johnny, I really appreciate you showing us your shop. Yeah, my You pleasure. don't mind that your shop and yourself is on YouTube? No, of course not. That's okay with you? Yeah, absolutely. Good, good. I'm happy to show it off to people and let them know that the jewelry shop could also contain precious metals, right? Mm -hmm. Now, can I have some information about, like, if somebody wants to contact you, um, will you do business over the phone? Absolutely. We'll do virtual appointments. Um, we can do Zoom, uh, Skype, um, Facebook, any kind of uh, video conferencing that you want. Um, if you want a, you know, engagement ring, anything from engagement ring to silver to gold, whatever it is that you're looking for, I'd be more than happy to have virtual appointments with anybody. And you can ship that stuff out? I can out. ship it right out. We Everything that we ship is pre-insured by my insurance company. We have a, um, a jeweler's block policy that protects all our packages that go out. So um, everything's insured. We ship it, usually priority mail. If somebody's in a big rush, we can do express. Um, but we usually we do like a flat rate priority mail and it gets there within two to three days. Awesome. Well, Johnny, I thank you very much. I yeah. want to say real quick that one of the things that brought me into your shop and kept me coming back was that when I came in, you were friendly with me. Mm -hmm. um, I know I'm a younger guy, and typically that's probably not a lot of your clientele, uh, you know, especially with precious metals like silver and gold. Uh, but you were very helpful. You were willing to talk to me. Mm -hmm. So um, it had me coming back, man. I really appreciate you. And yeah, your shop no is problem. a very nice, very nice look and a very nice layout. Um, you did a great job. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. My pleasure. Thanks for showing us around. Anytime. All right, everyone. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and share the video with others. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. At this point, though, I've got to go. Spectacular is out.